It's my pleasure now to introduce this morning's keynote speaker, higher education attorney and sports executive Mike Racy. Born and raised in Kansas, Mike graduated from Washburn University with a degree in business administration and received his Juris Doctorate from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. His previous professional experience includes service as Director of Promotions and Marketing at the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, NAIA, private practice as a general litigation attorney in Kansas City, and employment with the National Collegiate Athletic Association as the Director of Promotions and Marketing, Legislative Assistant, Chief Assistant Staff for Division II, and then as Vice President for the NCAA Division II, the top dog. As Vice President, he managed the Division II governance structure and its $35 million annual operating budget. He provided tremendous leadership in the consideration of policies and legislation that affect all of America and Division II, and coordinated the national office staff and support for the services of over 300 Division II member schools in the United States and Canada. In 2011, he was selected as an American Council on Education Fellow in 2013, he became the University of Central Missouri's first chief, chief strategy officer, and in 2014 became their vice president for law policy and strategy. He's been a provider of collegiate athletic consulting, and in February of this upcoming year, he will become the fifth commissioner for the 105 year, during the 105 year history of the MIAA Athletic Conference. Mike and his wife Kathleen and their three sons reside in Overland Park, Kansas. I'm so pleased that he could be with us today. This is his inaugural appearance at an MIAA school official function. We want to welcome him to the University of Nebraska Kearney. I'd like you all to meet Mike Racy. Mike? Thank you very much. I feel right at home in a gymnasium, so um, thank you. Um, and thank you for that wonder, wonderful introduction, Chancellor Christensen. It's a great honor to be here today at UNK, and I'd like to congratulate all the families and our graduates as you celebrate this very important milestone. So many doors are now open for each of you because you are a college graduate. Job well done. As I look out at this morning's graduates, I'm reminded I've sat in your seat on three different occasions. Uh, first, at my high school graduation, again during my undergraduate ceremony, and then finally at my law school graduation. Each time I remember hoping the speaker would be both interesting and quick with their remarks. And I hope to accomplish both of those objectives for you today. I've also been reminded recently that being the commencement speaker is a little like being the strange aunt or uncle at the holiday gathering. It wouldn't be an important gathering without their invitation and without them showing up, but everyone sure hopes that they don't say too much. As you heard in my introduction, I was raised in Kansas. I spent most of my career in higher education and in leadership positions in intercollegiate athletics. I want to speak to you this morning about some of the lessons that I've learned from sport. I've been fortunate to work for, the, for four of the five presidents of the NCAA and they taught me that the NCAA is a higher education association. Its mission is education, education through sport. I want to accomplish two things with this morning's address. First, I'd like to, I'd like to show you how I discovered my passion, which helped define the professional purpose in my life. And then second, I'd like to encourage all of you to consider a few core principles, which I've discovered to be meaningful in my career in intercollegiate athletics, and I hope they're meaningful to you as you embark on your own career or graduate studies. As a kid growing up in Lawrence, Kansas, I loved sports. I wasn't just passionate about playing sports, however. I was passionate about organizing sports. I loved having structure around the driveway basketball games or structure around the backyard football games. I loved to mark the boundaries for the fields that we played on. I loved to organize the bracket for our neighborhood driveway basketball tournaments. 
I was a kid that didn't mind keeping score on the chalkboard while the other kids played basketball. I loved the competition, but I also was a stickler to the structure of the events we would use to determine winners and losers. My mom's here today, and I'm sure she would confirm these quirky and un unusual interests of her son. Fast forward now to 30 years. As a dad to three boys, we always enjoyed turning our backyard into the best sport venue in the neighborhood. From home run fences and dugouts for our wiffle ball tournaments to a homemade golf green for chipping and putting competition, we worked hard to create the unique places for special sports memories. My oldest son, Cal, is here today. And Calvin, I hope you took as much joy from those creations over the years that I did. Now that I've shared these stories with you this morning, I want you to see and understand how those interests and passion played such an influential part of my career and led me to my previous job at the NCAA and to my current role as commissioner of the MIAA. I was sitting in your seat 30 years ago wondering what I would do with my business degree. And I was sitting in your same seat 25 years ago wondering what I would do with my law degree. For two decades now, my career is centered on the things I've enjoyed doing for a very long time and things that I did before I was even paid to do them. I discovered a way I could use my business and law degrees, follow my passion, and have those interests be a big part of my career. For my life, it has always included some type of event management and rules making for sports competitions to be specific. And I've used my business skills and my legal training to achieve success and take on bigger and more important responsibilities. For some of our graduates, your passion might be music. For others, it might be traveling or exploring. For some, it might be physical fitness and health. Whatever your interests, whether long held since childhood or recently discovered at UNK, I challenge all of you to recognize and understand those passions, define your purpose, and look for opportunities to focus your career or professional life in those interests. As I mentioned earlier, the second thing I want to touch on is to highlight a few core principles I've discovered in intercollegiate athletics and encourage you to think about those as you begin the next chapter of your life. According to the Olympic Legacy website, the athletic ideal is above all the primary legacy of the ancient Olympics. The website details how the ancient Greeks helped develop athletic ideals by believing that the enhancement of the mind, body, and spirit were linked. The Greeks believed a well-educated person was instructed in all areas of mind, body, and spirit. Physical training was valued for its role in the development of such qualities as endurance and patience. We are told the Greeks believed that sport helped with the development of a disciplined, devout, virtuous citizen of the democracy. The philosophy was the success of government depended, in, uh, depended on the character of its citizenry. The Olympic Legacy website goes on to detail how the ancient Greek society was very uh, competitive with an unmatched passion for sport. Athleticism in ancient Greece was not isolated into the categories of just sport and physical fitness. Rather, it was a blend of civic, educational, social, and moral principles. Athletics were considered an indis in indispensable part of education, not just extracurricular activities. Now, I've shared this brief lesson with you from the Olympic Legacy website because the athletic ideal of excellence in mind, body, and spirit has been at the core of my philosophy for intercollegiate athletic participation on our college campuses. As a vice president at the NCAA, this is the environment I help promote for Division II athletics. At Division II schools like UNK, the philosophical approach for athletics is defined as life in the balance, in which student athletes are provided opportunities, encouragement, and resources to excel academically, athletically, and as citizens in their community. I discovered how important these values are for a full and well-rounded life, and I want to encourage all of you to think about these 
as important areas to focus on as graduates of this great university. First, excellence in mind. Commit yourself to being a lifelong learner. Be an avid reader. Search for ways to improve your skills through training programs and professional development opportunities. Think about ways to advance your career with a graduate degree. Second, excellence in body. Stay fit. Be healthy. Make wise decisions about what you eat, how often you exercise, the amount of sleep you get. Be a good role model with healthy habits. And finally, excellence in spirit. Think beyond yourself. Give back to charities and to your alma mater. Make your community a better place to live in. Share your talents with others. Get involved with your town or city. These are some of the keys to success and happiness I've discovered for my life. I hope you'll consider excellence in mind, body, and spirit so you will be a successful and happy UNK alum. Congratulations again on your success and for those achievements in the future that will be the direct result of your hard work at UNK. Thanks for inviting me to be here and best of luck in your future endeavors.